Hello and welcome to an episode of Advanced GIS. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at GIS workflows and how to use Python programming and model builder to create reproducible workflows in ArcGIS Pro. All right, so what's the next part that you want to do? Here we can maybe add a little bit more text. So the first part of our process is loading the necessary libraries into Python. And we know that we need to import ArcPy. Do we need argvs? And my suggestion is that no, we don't. And notice that this is a code block. It has the in. There is an empty square brackets, which means it hasn't been run yet. So you come up to run, and you see that it goes from empty square brackets to one. Every process that you run in notebooks will be indexed incrementally so that you know which processes you run and in which order you run them. So ArcPy allows us to access all of the GIS tools. First thing we want to do is make sure that we have the spatial analyst tools extension available. You can either use markdown cells or you can use comments. Comments preceded with a hash. So make sure we have access to spatial analyst tools, and we'll run that. The output checked out just means that we've checked out that particular extension. Importing this toolbox I don't think is necessary because we are in Arc Pro here. And what we want to do next is set our output environment. And if we come down here to this with Arc, ArcPy ENV Manager, we set the Scratch workspace and the workspace. So over here in Notebooks, we want to set our workspace to our file geo database. So which one do we want our file geo database to be? Now we could create a new one, but we've already created one before. So we come over here to our folders. We take a look at the WShed GDB and we notice that we have our layers here. All right, so how do we actually assign this as our GDB? In folders, you can find your WShed GDB, which for me is right here. If I look at its properties, this is the path and this is the name. One of the nice things about Adam is that I can take a look at a GDB and copy the full path. Either way you get it, doesn't matter. We're going to come over here. And we've seen where file paths on computers are in strings. So we use the double quotes and paste. And we see that I have my C colon backslash workspace backslash advanced GIS backslash WShed dot GDB. And that's where I want this to be. The problem is that the backslash used in Windows is an escape character used in most programming languages. And in Windows environments, you have to escape the escape character, which means that each backslash has to be a double backslash. And that will mean that we don't have any problems with our address. And we can save this. This is maybe my GDB. And if we run it, 
we see that it just saves it as a variable name. But this isn't actually setting the workspace. The workspace is actually set in arcpy.env manager. And we see that this is a function with no doc strings, so it's not very helpful, which is you'll find is often the case. And what we can do is set the copy, paste. The scratch workspace is no longer this. It's my GDB. And the workspace here is no longer this. It's my GDB. And if we run that, I should be able to see arcpy.env.workspace is defined there as my watershed GDB. Now, why do we spend so much time defining our workspace? And the reason that we do it once here is because when it's defined, all layers and all outputs are going to be by default looked for here or saved there if we don't define them elsewhere. And this saves us a lot of typing later on by defining the workspace. All right, so here we can say, so part one, um, this is going to be getting Python ready for our analysis and loading the necessary libraries into Python. So here we have loading the necessary libraries into Python. Checking out the spatial analyst tools and setting up the workspace environment. All right, so there's part one. And part two, what we want to do is let's let's define all of our inputs and outputs. Maybe define parameters. If you take a second, it's always good to come up here and click save. So what were the parameters that we wanted to use? So we have an input DEM raster, and I'm gonna call it my Napa DEM. I have an input outlet table, and that is my outlet geotxt. I have an output coordinates system. And maybe we're going to take a look at that. And I have my snap distance, which is 120. And my output watershed raster which I'm just going to call Napa W shed without the name. So how do we get the coordinate system? Now we could just copy and paste all of this and it would be perfectly fine. But we know that we can get coordinate systems in ArcPy. So it looks like we can use a describe function on a data set and get the spatial reference back. Let's see if we can pull that over here arcpy.describe and we give it a data set and our data set was going to be our input DEM and let's try and run that. OK, 
Okay. And then this is supposed to have a dot spatial reference. And lo and behold, it does. It is NAD 1927 UTM zone 10N. So this I'm going to copy and paste there. I'm going to rerun this cell. And then I can take a look at my output coordinate system to see, did it read it correctly? And it did. So there are all of my parameters that I need to run my tool. We forgot about this overwriting the outputs. So I'm going to come and copy that. And in workspace, I'm going to add a new code line and paste this. And I'm going to say, let's allow file overwriting. And I'm going to turn that into true and run that code. And up here, add it to my list, allow overwriting of spatial layers. Okay, so there we imported the necessary modules. Then we checked out the spatial analyst, we defined the workspace and we allowed overwriting. Then we defined our parameters that we need and then we can define our process.